exciting train rides in the world. This guy is cleaning his bloody socks in the sink. The challenging conditions in Ethiopia are more than made up for by the views. This train ride is so out there, the local people always seem pleased to see you. and a half hours to go. I haven't got a seat. And I think it's going to be a rough journey. It's an 18-hour train ride to get from the capital, Addis Ababa, east to the Muslim-walled city of Harar. train ride takes you to the eastern highlands. Ethiopia is a fascinating, rarely visited country with its own script, clock, and calendar. And wherever you're traveling, the great thing about trains is they seem to bring out the friendly side of people. What is there to do on the trains? Can you get food and... Yes, you can get food on the train. Yeah. You can't uh, go to the toilet in the train. Yeah. <laughs> Want to share this egg with me? No. No. I right, and... <laughs> this is going to be hell. <laughs> <laughs> right from the dawn of the steam age, people have been enthusiastic about trains. So many people love them so much, and in the UK, several of the earliest trains have been preserved. Justine Shapiro takes a nostalgic trip in the north of England. Runs from Carlisle near the Scottish border to the Peak District town of Settle. Would you like a cracker with some caviar? Oh no, no, really, I couldn't. Really, no. Oh please. No, well, all right. By the time Queen Victoria took the throne in 1837, Britain was the greatest power in the world, and the steam train was a potent symbol. Goods could be transported faster and cheaper, and people could travel in a speed and luxury never before dreamed of. Britain was leading an industrial revolution, and the Carlisle to Settle Railway was one of its impressive achievements. The Industrial Revolution reached all corners of the British Isles, even into the Scottish Highlands, where another iconic steam train is still in action, as Megan McCormick finds out. I am so excited about this journey. First of all, I love trains, but this is supposed to be one of the best train journeys in the world. It's called the West Highland Railway. It costs about 21 pounds, which is around $35, for two short hours on the train, but it's gonna be magnificent. The earliest railways used horses to draw carts along the rails, but in 1804, the first steam-powered locomotive was built in Great Britain, where it remained the main form of traction right up until the mid-20th century. The West Highland Railway runs from Glasgow via Fort William to Maleg on the coast. Its Gaelic name, Rathad Eorain Nan Aileon, means the Iron Road to the Isles. But there are unmissable train journeys all over the world, trips justified by their nostalgic atmosphere and, of course, scenery. And I took a trip well worth taking for its own sake 
the Transalpine Express on New Zealand's South Island. It runs from Christchurch to Greymouth, but the scenery is so spectacular, some people don't get off the other end, but stay on the train round trip. This is New Zealand's longest train with up to 15 carriages. Now this is my seat right here, which looks comfy. Nice wide windows taking the scenery. But I've been told, if you don't mind standing and a little wind in your hair, the open-sided observation deck is the place to be. The completion of the Transalpine Railway Line in 1923, with its nearly 20 tunnels and numerous viaducts, massively cut the journey time across the Southern Alps. One of the world's most spectacular rail journeys, the Transalpine is very popular with travelers and costs about $150 return. Halfway through the journey, a five mile long tunnel cuts through to the other side of the Southern Alps. What a difference a few miles can make. On that side of the tunnel, it was dry and grassland. On this side, it's green and wet as it should be because on the west coast, it rains up to 20 feet every year. This is one of the highest train journeys in the world, rising to an altitude of 15,000 feet through dizzying mountain scenery. Justine is in Argentina on a classic train ride into the Andes. Now I know why this trip is called, what's it called? The train to the clouds, I think is what it's called. Oh, I've got altitude sickness. And round here, there's only one answer for that. Cocoa Come leaves. I just put it in my mouth? Leave it. I feel like a goat. Oh, uh, uh. See ya. Uh, I didn't even give it, no? Uh-huh. Coca is actually illegal in Argentina, but up here in the Andes, it's tolerated and you see people chewing it everywhere. Yeah. It tastes like bitter tea leaves. Mónica y Enrique quieren saber los requisitos para una luna de miel perfecta. ¿Será un hotel de lujo? Sorprendente. ¿Yo o el cuarto? Los dos. Un toque de aventura. O quizás un baile sensual. Pero cuidado, con tantas opciones, hasta un anfitrión profesional podría enamorarse. ¡Te voy a dar un beso! ¿Te doy la mano y tú quieres el brazo? Destino Luna de Miel. Todos los lunes en Discovery Travel and Living. ¿Todavía está limpiando con esos trapeadores tradicionales? ¿Está harta de escurrir a mano lampazos llenos de agua sucia y bacterias? Presentamos Spin and Go, el revolucionario lampazo de cabezal giratorio que rota 360 grados con un sistema de centrifugado de alta potencia. El cabezal limpiador de Spin and Go está hecho de microfibras de nanotecnología. Es súper absorbente y muy eficaz para atrapar el polvo y la suciedad. Puede usarse tanto húmedo para limpiar manchas como seco para quitar el polvo. Es ideal para limpiar mármol, cerámicos y pisos de madera, ventanas, muebles, autos y más. 